what has happened in today's world that you can't even find a decent cutting board anymore. The boards on the market are ugly, bland, stained, and what? Some people don't have a cutting board? This must be stopped. It is the horrible truth that not all people have a decent cutting board, but we can relinquish this from the horrible, tasteless, bland, even unhealthy at times cutting boards and we can f make our own cutting board and it can become... Some things are just classic. Some things don't know that they are classic. But for those who truly are, they really do become Welcome from Classic Work. I'm going to show you how I built this end grain cutting board step by step, show you all the tips and tricks that I did to make this board the way it is today. Now for this project and all my projects I'm going to have three gauges that are going to determine the difficulty, the time, and the patience required to do these projects. We'll start with the amount of skill that it takes. Uh, it's a scale from 1 to 10. 1 meaning that if you don't know what this is, you probably shouldn't... If you don't know what this is, then you can get away with 1. If you know what this is, can tell it by name what it was used for, and know how to use it uh, precisely what it was designed to do, then this would be level 10. The next one is patient level. Same thing from 1 to 10. One meaning you won't even break a sweat. Ten, you're pulling out your hair and you're about to throw stuff across the shop and uh, give up on it pretty much. And then finally, the last one is how much time. And one meaning you can knock it out in half an hour. Ten meaning it might take up up to a year. And I've rated this project for the patience level is about a four. It's a easy to, it's a moderate to an easy moderate. Uh, it's, uh, you won't be breaking any nerves or anything like that. All of it's going to take time to glue up and you're just going to have to go with the course. Next is skill level. Skill level in this, you're going to need quite a bit of tools to do it, uh, but they're all, they're, they're, there are numerous other ways that you can get at it. I'm just showing you the best way that I know how. Uh, the skill level for this one is going to be rated at a 5. And finally, uh, how much um, time it's going to take, uh, it's going to be rated at a 3, which is uh, anywhere from 4 days to a week. So uh, let's get started and let's get after it and I'm going to show you how I built this cutting board. Okay, so why an ingrain cutting board? Here's why. If you can imagine this paintbrush as the fibers in a piece of wood, all the fibers are running this way with the bristles. And if you take a knife and you cut into those fibers, they will come away from each other and bits and pieces over time will will come apart from each other and bacteria and water and all sorts of stuff will get down into the wood and that's not classic work. It'll also stain the wood and uh, eventually it, it's not going to be very good for you to eat off of it. I mean to, you know, to eat what comes off of it. So if you take side grain and turn on end grain like this, what happens is when you take your knife and you chop into the fibers rather than chopping across the fibers, what happens is these fibers spring back and it creates, it, it locks up the wood so that nothing can get in there. And also it'll hide your chop marks, you won't see them as prominent as you will as a side cut, grain cutting board. And also it's not as hard on your knife since you're chopping into the much softer end grain. So to give you a demonstration of what that looks like, this is your typical side grain cutting board and this one here has had a lot of use and if you look closely actually you don't even have to look that closely 
you can see every joint that's in this wood where it's been glued up at and bacteria like I said water will get down in there and expand those out and just this is just a breeding ground for all sorts of bad stuff and also you can see the knife marks very prominently and it's it's not pretty it's ugly so we have much that we can improve on this design so we need to look at other alternatives to the end grain cutting board one thing you need to take into consideration is what type of wood that you're going to use and the great thing is about an end grain cutting board is, is you can use many different types of woods all in contrast with each other to show off well your woodworking skills for one thing and how much beauty there is from not just one one single board but from many together now you need to pick a wood that is very stable and very dense you want to stay away from uh, sappy woods like um, pine which is considered a soft wood you want to pick a hard wood for sure but you want to stay away from like I said sappy woods and you want to stay away from porous woods uh, like white oak for instance it's a very hard wood but it is very porous so you kind of want to stay away from those so let's take a look at the hard stuff okay the typical wood that most cutting boards are made out of is maple now maple is a very very good dense wood but you know it's very very uh, plain it's like the plain Jane of of wood uh, I mean it, it's beautiful I mean you have some awesome grain patterns in it but you need something to set it off with a very good wood to go with uh, maple is purple heart purple heart is an extremely dense exotic wood and they go well with each other they're like bread and butter I mean they they, they have good contrast with each other and both of them are in the hardwoods they're a little bit hard to work with because purple heart is extremely dense and so is maple but they work fine together let's, let's take a look at some others um, Walnut is a very good hardwood, uh, American hardwood, and you know you can you can you can switch these around. You know you can use walnut and um, maple here, and that's very good uh, light, to, light to dark contrast. But you know it's you know it's still kind of kind of bland. You know uh, you can do something a little more exotic. You know you could do walnut and purple heart. That that would definitely uh, be a little bit out there but um, it's more they're more the same color especially when you put your finish on them so what I'm gonna do today is I've got a hardwood two hardwoods is uh, Hatoba and Walnut and both of these are gonna they're gonna light up the sky they have a very very good deep earth tone to them but they're, they're gonna look good together I think that's gonna be really nice one thing that you want to take into consideration is both of these boards are only three quarters of an inch thick and if you can if you can get stock that is uh, two inch or inch and a half if you can get it but if you can't uh, well, we're going back to a classic woodworkers dilemma which is we have to glue things up but we have ways around this so set my blade here instead of the uh, targeted one and a half inches that that we want I've set it at one and five eighths the reason is we want a good sixteenth of material on the top and bottom if we have to remove to make the table dead flat which we'll talk about in a little bit but set uh, whenever you saw off lumber make sure that you saw it oversized because you're gonna want to mill and cut it a little bit and get it just right so take the time to do this to can take into consideration to make everything a little bit bigger than you might need so let's get started okay 
Okay, now you can see the cutting board, what the pattern is going to be look like, it's going to look like now. And you can see how well the, the walnut looks with the Hatova now. Now, the final dimensions for my board, and you don't have to go by these specs, in each one of these uh, individual pieces that's got to be glued together, all have a certain size they're going to wind up being. The two end caps out here are going to be two and a quarter. The one step in is going to be three quarters of an inch. One step in, these here are going to be an inch and a half, and another step in, both of these are going to be an inch and a quarter. So we're going to have to glue all these individually except for the three quarter pieces, and then uh, we'll have to mill them down to size. Right now we're oversized. Right now we're at 13 and a half inches by 19 inches for rough shaping. And all of my stock, I got lucky, and this is not three quarter stock, it's uh, 13 sixteenths. So we're in good shape on that. So the next step is get out every one of your clamps you have and glue up the sections that need to be glued up. So that'll be our next step.